Okay, thank you again. Our next speaker is Gu Wei Wei from uh, Michigan State University. Um, take it away. I won't take up any more of your time. Yeah, thank you. Uh, actually, her pronunciation of my name is really good. I, when I go to the Google and I try to ask Google to pronounce some name, and it says, go away. <laughs> okay, I'm 100% I'm in the mathematics, but I do have a code uh, position uh, in, the, in the biology. So my research is concerned about the, about the mathematical foundation of, of bio, biology and uh, also for drug design. I mean, actually the mathematics, uh, I would say in the history of science, the mathematics always goes with, with, with the, science, the frontier of science. For example, like Newton's mechanics and Hamilton's mechanics, quantum mechanics, and you go to Einstein's, Einstein's uh, <coughs> relativity theory, everything goes together with mathematics. And also go to recent uh, things like string theory and things like that with the quark mode. So, so mathematics play a central role in the science. But what can happen to the biology? This is a question we try to ask. So if we ask what is the, 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 the mathematical foundation of biology, I don't think anybody can give you a very good answer over there. So, so my research is concerned this part. And then I combine those things with the machine learning uh, and Physical principles, quantum mechanics, statistical mechanics for drug design. This is something I try to talk today. But actually, I could, I would, I would like to say, actually, everything mathematics work over there, like different geometry, algebraic topology, graph theory, and the part different equation. I can just pick up one of them, combine with the rest. I can still get a very good results for the for for the biological prediction. That's what I try to say. Mathematics is a very good representation for the biological sense. So the particular mathematics I would like to talk today is uh, is uh, is topology, it's algebraic topology. It so looks like something you see. Topology is a very ancient subject. Even something like a few hundred years ago, and you see the topology is a very interesting part. So there is consensus about the, how different parts of a subject is connected together, and what topological space they are, and what their property, how to represent them. Uh, actually, the basic things underlying our work is actually very simple. It's a so-called Betty Lambda. If you would just, uh, I mean, when I try to ask my colleague, I say I'm going to present the people to biophysics about some mathematics, I'm worried about it. And uh, my, my colleague said, oh, go ahead, no problem. Biophysics people are the most smart people in the whole world. You don't need to worry about it. So let's go ahead. Yeah. So basically, we think about Betty is zero. is the number of connected components in the any subject. And the back one is the number of circles. It's really simple. And the back two is really just the cavities. So if you look at something here, make it first a bar. So back one connected components is one, and there is a low circle over there, low cavity, right? The second one, you got a circle and also con uh, connected components is one. So that's why back zero is one, back one is one. Back two is low cavity. And then look at the torus over there. So basically, you have a is one com connected component. So that's why battery zero is one, and the battery battery two is two because they have two rings over there, the red ring and the green ring. And also battery two is one because you get an inside is a cavity. So that's the fundamental principle for what I'm talking about. What we are doing over there. So when you so so when you have a data a set of data, the discrete data like this one, how can you load the topological connectivity? And then the answer actually says it depends on the how what type of how you define they are connected. So the way to define the connected is you basically use a circle. If you define a radius over there, and then you see this uh, this points they are connected. So I think it is something mathematically so called simplest. So it's zero simple as this is just this guy, and the one simple as is just a X, and two simple as is a triangle, so on and so forth. Really simple. And this is something really simple is a cons 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 uh, constituted a, a, a systematic framework for you to describe a biological subjects over there. So, so basically, it uses this type of things, and the mathematician try to generalize. Oh, if I give a huge protein, I can use this method try to define the simplest. And then I use a group theory. So, different the simplest put together, I can form a group because for a group, uh, you know, it's just another element in the group, and also define a way of calculating things like a like rule of calculation. So, in this way, mathematician invent something 
we have a set of simplex and uh, some chain group and uh, also boundary group things like that. In this way, they have a total caution over the boundary group. <coughs> uh, some some two groups over there is, uh, and then you can have a rank of of the of the of the, of the harmonic group. That's what actually gave you the Betty number. This is giving you a very practical way to calculate Betty number systematically for anything you can think about a discrete set of points, like a set of protein, uh, protein ligand binding complex. I don't want to get into the deep of mathematics over there. I just show you an example, to see how it works. So this is the way you say, I define a radius, but the radius can change. This is my radius is changing. If my radius is changing, my connectivity is changing. So if you are connected to that, and my simple as you have one simple as over there, and then I have the other one simple as. So connectivity is changing, you are changing radius. And in this way, I can systematically change the radius. This is so-called fluctuation. And then I can apply so so-called Victoria radius complex. So in such a way, I can calculate that is zero and uh, battery one, battery one is over there. I have no battery one at this point. And, and here I have a circle, over there, right? So I have battery zero is changing, it's decreasing because everything is connected. My this battery zero is finished. I don't have anything. I just got one into the component. But however, I got two rings over there. My ring, number of rings is increasing. But if I just keep increasing difference, this ring going to disappear, you see? This one is going to disappear in just one second. So it will be basically gone. So I left with one. So that's why my barcode over there is going to stop at this point because it won't go anymore. And this one is still going, you see, but going to be stopped very soon. And then in the end of my whole stuff over there. So, okay. So that's given me, oh, sorry. So the final picture over there is basically is the, my problematic fingerprint. How can I use this for protein? So this is the alpha helix, for example. This is the alpha helix. I have a four alpha helix atoms over there. So my back is zero, I have four independent components. They are grow, grow. This is the radius grow. And here at a point where everything is connected together, I just get a one. And at the point here, actually, this is the radius. This is the distance between the alpha helix. Uh, sorry, uh, C alpha atoms, sorry, in the alpha helix. So basically, it's 3.8, roughly, everything is stuck over there. And then a four put together, have a, have a, have a basically have a, have a ring over there. So this is the topological fingerprint. We try to use it for, for description. You see, if I increase one more atoms, I got one more in between the components until my rate of scale to 3.8, and then they disappear. And then I have a two rings because the first four have given me one ring, the other four give me other ring. So this gives me a topological fingerprint that I can go systematically for very complicated biomolecules, even cryo-yam data, whatever, I don't have a fingerprint for it. So this fingerprint is something which has to use it in, to describe a biologic, so biological molecules. So this is a basic principle. And actually this, this representation can be getting a little bit better if you are thinking about unfolding or protein in the such a process. If it goes there, my battery, my battery zero is this one, battery one is this one, battery two is this one. You see, battery two at this point, I basically don't have any cavity inside. Of the, I have a lot of cavity inside of here, but when you get to this point, it means here. So this thing is gone. There's no cavity, you see? But I still get some rings. And you see some, some rings over there. Those rings are really the, just the five lumbar rings and six lumbar rings in my molecular. So everything's there. So my topological description give a full representation. What is really going on? So, so in the biomolecules, so this is an entirely different representation over there. And because it's a systematically generated for any molecular, so we can have a molecular fingerprint. It's just like a fingerprint for a person, but a face for a person. And we can use it to identify a different molecular. Because of that reason, I also can use it to represent the molecular such as that. And the, if they are in the binding state, or it's different, different the binding state, or different pose, whatever, we can characterize it in a systematic way. And give a, give a characterization is very precise. It's better when you can't get a number of hydrogen bonding. So this is the one I tried to, oh, I think I missed the one. Okay. Oh. Okay, I, I, I suppose I have a machine learning one, this is about it. Okay, it doesn't matter. So basically I use this method to couple with the 
uh, 10 more minutes, right? So we couple, use this method, couple with the machine learning method. Uh, at, at the beginning, I mentioned that we use the uh, machine learning random forest and uh, uh, gradient boost decision tree. And uh, we also use the uh, use neural network, uh, deep learning, uh, convolution of deep learning, that's a technique we use very often. Uh, sometimes we can use a uh, use a representation uh, like a manifold learning method to to represent uh, to represent the uh, very complicated molecules over there for particularly for the post uh, discrimination. So this one shows the uh, unfortunately I have a different learning picture. I don't know why it is still there. Okay. Uh, so 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 it shows the the diagram of how we generate deep learning things like that. So this is the result we this is the result we did for things like uh, protein uh, mutation induces the free energy change over there. So in this one we actually use our topologic method is T molecular mutation prediction. Uh, this gives us something faster prediction in the field for where a bunch of market data has uh, something like 2,600. 48 molecules over there for the mutation and the prediction. And this is for the memory and protein prediction. This is really difficult with the challenge. Why? Because the memory protein over the machine learning methods, basically you have a local statistical distribution. If you have a good distribution, good representation over there, you do your good. But uh, however, for, for the memory and protein mutation, they only have the data size is very small. So, so that's why everybody is doing very, very bad. You can see some of the methods over there, they are prediction. Uh, accuracy is uh, Pearson's correlation is 0 0.3. And use our method, we actually get something close to 0 0.6, something like that. So, 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 this, so this type of method means the topological based method really works very well. Uh, actually, improve the physical, most of the method here is a physical based method. They actually, uh, we actually almost double their accuracy. Our new result has is last day because this is we published last year. Actually, we now we have a 0 0.6. For, for the new results. We haven't published, published that part yet. And also we, 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 we use this type of method to, to represent the small molecules, like uh, small molecules for the, for, for the, for the <coughs> partition coefficients and, uh, <coughs> and the toxicity. I haven't shown you the toxicity results, but for partition co coefficients, the method actually works very well. Unfortunately, we didn't participate in the, in the, in the sample for that part. Like the, Partition coefficient calculation. This is just for the star set over there. Use one set, and we, we set up a model. Uh, use a, use a topology. So this is also TM M, TM. So it's a is a is a, is a topological method for for this type of partition prediction. And this is a, a lot of people over there doing those stuff. You can see so many different groups, so many different methods over there. So. Uh, this part is the one actually is, is the dark database. We have something more than 100,000 so for protein ligand decoy pairs, things like that. And, uh, and we use our topological method, we actually can do it much better compared with other methods in the literature. So this is a, we just published just last month or something for this one. So in, in, in the past competition biology. Uh, the last one is the PDB. This is more close to what we do. It's a, it's a 2003 core set of 195 component complex. Uh, our method also is uh, perform other methods over there. But however, those things are database over there. They are already existing in the scene. And the, before we do it, we know what is, what is the result, right? So how about our results for challenges? So this is something. We actually just participate in this challenge. We actually know this challenge less than two years, something like that. Before that, we don't know this, this, uh, this, this, this platform for the community to compare the results. So this is something we did for challenge two. So challenge two, uh, free energy set one, stage one. We actually, we, our result is, uh, is best for, for that part. And also challenge two, uh, because we didn't say anything about a challenge two. <clears throat> so our challenge two for the free energy set one, stage two, uh, candles to our prediction, you see basically the whole good results basically come from our group. And our group was also doing good on the energy, free energy part. I think this two dots are from Max. <laughs> so so he, he, yeah, so this is his result. I think this two, yeah, okay. So, so, so this is a free challenge too. How about free challenge about this uh, 
Grand Challenge, Grand Challenge three. Oh, my picture is here. Sorry, <laughs> that's what I'm looking for. Okay, this is what happened. This is the binding complex. You see, and we actually divide using binding complex into different groups, like uh, uh, oxygen kind of like the groups interacting over there, and also kind of stuff the carbon groups. And then we generate the process of homology diagram and that pictures. Those are fingerprints. And for those things, if I generate a, a really just a carbon. So uh, basically looking for the hydrophobicity interaction. If I generate a carbon uh, oxygen nitrogen, those type of thoughts of lack of fingerprint, or basically looking for the hydrogen bonding information. And also those information are uh, created those type of picture representation. And then we get into a neuron network for different learning. So and from there we just start a model and for prediction. Yeah, I'm, I'm done. Yeah. Yeah, this is my last picture over there. So this is for, for the one we, we participate in Grand Challenge 3. So there's a total of lighting list over there. We actually also have to have a number one in the all of uh, seven listed. Because free energy, you have both energy and the ranking, right? So over there, each free energy is two. So this, this one is two, this other two, this other two. Plus this is one is one. So we have a total of seven number one over there. So from our group. Uh, so now it's time for question, yeah. You see, uh, the posts are wicked part actually. So our posts, uh, we work use the user goal and the shielding goal and also what the of army. Uh, just one way to do the consensus, as we mentioned before. And the other way to do it is just to generate our own post uh, from a uh, uh, generate a post by ranking the posts by machine learning. We also have those also method. One more question while I'm switching. If not, let's thank our speaker again. And then...